folks. Right, um, I've been asked by a couple of people to do a little bit of an instructional video. Um, it's not going to be too taxing and it's going to be kept nice and simple because if you're new to helicopters you're going to have so much terminology bouncing around your head you're not going to make any sense for it whatsoever. So you've probably flown the what they call double horse, the coaxial helicopters, maybe even the fixed pitch and now you're moving on to collective pitch. So what does collective pitch mean? Well that is a collective pitch head. Okay. Normally it would have a fly bar going through there, i.e. it would be called a fly barred head, but it's collective pitch. So, let's keep it simple. First of all, that bit there, that is your swash plate and it spins round. It has to spin round because when your shaft is going round that stays still. Okay, just like that. So, what's happening as it's spinning round, you have uh, movements from your servos. Now, depending on what movements you make, um, you're going to either put the head in that position or the head in that position. Now, what that is, is moving all your cyclic servos up together. And what that does is changes the pitch. Okay? Changes the pitch up there. So it turns your blades down and up. So if you turn the blade down, so the trailing edge down, that gives you lift. If you turn it up, it pushes you down. Simple as that. That is all collective pitch is, basically. Okay. So, basically, once you've got the idea of that, it's quite simple. Now, most helicopters will use 120 mixing. So you'll see on your DX6i or whatever it may be, you'll have a swash mix, so a swash, and it will tell you if um, you're 90 degrees or 120. Basically, this is 120. There you go, 120. Choo, that angle there. So, that's going up and down, that turns your blades. So, what makes it go side to side? Well, this, basically. So, if you can imagine, when this is spinning round, if you push the elevator forward, you see what's happening? That is making the swash arm go forward. Okay, sorry, the fly bar arm go forward. And as it spins round, it will turn your fly bar paddles to push you forward. So, when it comes to the back here, it will basically turn them like that, and it will push it down. When it goes to the front, Okay, they'll be pretty much level, so it's just pushing down at the back. And it's the same principle for side to side. You go that side, it will push your fly bar pedals down, paddles down this side, so it'll give you, just like your blades, kind of lift to push it that way. And if you basically took your swash the opposite way, when your paddle got to that position, you get lift from this side to push you that way. Okay, so that's basically it. Okay, it's quite simple, not that difficult to understand. Now, when you're setting these up, you want everything at 90 degrees. So when your servo, and a servo is one of these, okay, basically, when your servo arm is 90 degrees, like that, what you basically want is your blades flat and level as well. Okay? So, set your servos at 90 degrees, get all your mechanical bits at 90 degrees, okay? So that fly bar, that uh, fly bar arm there is 90 degrees. Okay, your swash is pretty much in the middle of its travel. Okay, every arm you can see basically sat at 90 degrees. Then adjust these links to make sure your blades are at 90 degrees. And once everything's at 90 degrees, that's 90% of your setup done. It's very easy. Okay, now that's a cyclic head. Okay, and that is fly barred. You've also got fly barless, and that's a fly barless head. So basically, you're taking out the need for the fly bar in the middle. Okay, all you're doing as you move up and down, okay, you're doing the same thing, but you've got a lot more movement with the fly barless head. And also when you're tilting side to side, you now turn your blades side to side. Now, with a fly barred head, you're going to need a gyro. And a gyro looks something like that. Okay. So the gyro's job is to basically keep your tail pointing in the direction you want your nose to point. Let me expand on that. So, if you want your nose to go left, your tail would turn in a manner as it's spinning to make that go left. Right, right. But what this does, basically, is keeps it level. Okay, unless you want to go left and right. So when you're flying, if you've got it in what they call heading hold mode, which usually is a solid green light on these, basically your tail is going to move and your pitch on your tail is going to move to keep your nose pointing level. Okay, pointing the direction you want it to go in. 
If you obviously turn left or right, it's going to hold it in that location you point it at. So if you give it a little bit of stick and you go that way, it's going to keep going that way. It's not going to come back. That's rate mode. So that's basically your gyro for a fly bar head. If you're using fly barless, you're going to need a free axis gyro, something like that. Okay, that's a free axis gyro. Basically, um, you'll hear lots of terms V bar, you'll hear um, free GX, you'll hear this particular case, I think this is a Roberts G31, which isn't a bad one. I haven't used it yet, but I'm told it's not a bad one. Okay, and what this does is basically it manages what a fly bar would do. So, it's not only a gyro that keeps your tail level and square, it also moves your head around automatically to keep your helicopter level. Okay? And the idea is um, it makes it more maneuverable in the air, it makes it better in windy conditions, because uh, basically this is managing okay? what this is doing. Mm, well, that's the theory. People would argue. Okay? So, hopefully that's made a bit of sense. Okay, um, if you are starting off with cyclic helicopters, um, I would suggest personally, but it's entirely up to you, you go for a fly barred helicopter. One, they're cheaper, and you'll pick them up second hand much, much cheaper than a brand new fly barless, and less to go wrong. Once you've set it up mechanically, pretty much you're okay. Okay, but with a fly barless system, it takes a lot of messing about with parameters, a lot of messing around with computer programs. Okay, so it is more difficult. So start off with that, and then move on to fly barless. The exception to the rule is things like the Blade MCPX. Um, they are very good helicopters. I've got one myself, and they are brilliant. But if you go for the size of about 450, which most people start off on because they're easy to repair once you crash them, and you will crash them, then go for one like that. Okay. Um, if you need any more help with any things, I'll do my best. Okay. But uh, that's a quick explanation. Hope it helps.